Say it one more time, I didn't hear you. What inspired the test director to transpose to the test instructor? Um, well, it, it all goes back to our casting our regulars, um, which at the time was uh, you know, Goliath, Lisa, the trio, Hudson, Bronx, Demona, and Xanatos. Those were the only people we auditioned for back then when we started. Um, we had big calls for every part, and the only part where I had someone specific in mind was Hudson, which I did write for Ed Asner, although I didn't think we'd ever get it. You know, I didn't think that we could get it. But, you know, at the, uh, you know I wrote one-page character descriptions of every character for the actors who were reading so they'd know who it was they were reading about. And the last line of uh, the Hudson description was, Hudson hates spunk, which if you're a Mary Tyler Moore fan, you know that that's the classic line from the pilot episode of Mary Tyler Moore where Lou Grant says to Mary, um, you got spunk, kid, and she's all pleased and everything. I hate spunk. And, uh, um, so actually a couple people read before Ed who were pretty good. But, you know, Ed comes in, he sees that, he knows the parts for him, and in fact, he reads, he did a great job. You know, I was actually terrified when he started to read, because I'm like, my God, what if, he's, what if he doesn't get it? You know, and what am I going to do? How, how can I possibly not do it? Because he's a big, I'm, a, I'm such a fan of Ed's work as a whole. He's an amazing actor, an amazing fan. Um, and I very much wanted him to play the part. And then, you know, to top it off, I said, do it with a Scottish accent? <laughs> and he could. <laughs> but he was the only guy, to get back to your question, he was the only guy who I had a specific vision of who I wanted in the role. And um, so, and we were doing all these roles simultaneously, not like we did Demona one day and Brooklyn another day. It was just, you know, whenever the actors came in, we'd audition them for whatever roles might be appropriate for them. Jeff Bennett read for all three of the trio. <laughs> uh, and when it, Marina was, however, the first person to read for Demona, it wasn't planned that way, she just came in to audition for Demona, she was the first person to read for Demona, and she nailed it. And we were like, that's it. And, it, and we had other people coming in that day to read for Demona, and so it was like, okay, we'll sit through them. Um, <laughs> but uh, she was perfect, and it was great, I think, for her, because Particularly back then, she had been spending like six years at the time playing the nicest character <laughs> in the universe. And so playing Demona was, I think, really fun for her. Um, at least I hope it was. And uh, with Jonathan, um, we had a, a, just a, a lot of good people read for Xanatos. And um, we wound up casting someone else. Um, but Jonathan was like up there. And then we, uh, that person didn't really work out. Uh, he was a great actor, but the sound wasn't right. And one of the things about voice acting, I mean voice casting, is there are really two factors in casting any role. Obviously, acting ability, but as I talked about a little yesterday when we were doing the Reign of the Ghost thing, literally the sound of the voice is important. And there are a few guys like Jeff Bennett who can alter the sound of their voice without making a, with, and still act. But most people, if they try and make those kinds of shifts, they're so focused on changing their voice, they forget to act simultaneously. And there aren't a lot of guys who can do that. There's Jim Cummings, there's Jeff Bennett. They're actually a lot in the sense that they're more than a couple, but there aren't a lot in a larger sense. <coughs> so the guy we had hired was a great actor, but um, you know, just didn't quite have the right sound that I was looking for, and Jonathan um, came in and, and he was just perfect. So that was how we got the first two Star Trek people. Then if you, you know, after that we did an audition, we just cast. And it would be me and Jamie Thomason and, and maybe Frank and Michael Reeves trying to figure out um, who we would use in these roles. And uh, uh, 
you know, you've got two Star Trek actors sitting out there and you've got this, you know, you know two different and later three different series to choose from. And so, you know, go, oh, well, we've got this brother of Goliath and he's got to have a real deep voice. You look over at Jonathan. Hey, what about Michael Dorn? You know, <laughs> great. You know, I mean, it, it wasn't so much like an active hunt for Star Trek actors, it's just, you know, you're racking your brains to think who might be good for a role, and sometimes you say, uh, Renard, how about Robert Culp? It's, but, you know, when you've got a couple Star Trek actors in the room, or in the next room, at any rate, um, it's easy to sort of think in that direction. And, you know, it doesn't hurt to have that kind of 